Uh, are we rolling, actually? I think so, right? We're rolling? Yeah? Okay, okay, thumbs up, thumbs up. Firstly, firstly, thumbs up from Caro as opposed to Mackie. Um, big shout to Mackie, who couldn't make it here. Our normal yes. behind the scenes, who is yes. as much a part of Tough Love as your, uh, your, your faces of it. Yeah. Number five. A bit Excited. of a different background to normal. Yes, a bit of a different um, co zip code area, phone area. Oh, what, oh, what? Yes, Zaxen, so where, where we're in we? Zaxen right now, I think. Is it, is it Zaxen okay. or Sachsen-Anhalt? Zaxen okay, okay. Probably. I mean, I think this complex has its own postcode, no? Yeah, probably. Feropolis. The and why are we at Feropolis, Ben? Um, uh, yeah, we, we got invited by, by Melt uh, to visit the place and... Uh, roll around and uh, have a look at uh, the beautiful people here <laughs> and uh, yeah it's actually not, not my first time I, I was here last year uh, with the, the crew Cut, were, you, were you there last year as well you were there and Carol were you there also no yeah uh, it was pretty nice uh, last year I to be honest uh, from the beginning I am not a festival type who would have known yeah I'm not a festival type I like to have a nice cozy room after the rave but just speaking of cozy rooms, before we go into festival, yeah. what, is, what is this room? Do we know? Because I this, is, this is not part know. of the festival. There'll be yeah. people who say, this is Melt, but I didn't yes, see this. Yes, how is this, this uh, connected room. to Melt? I, I think so. Melt is called the Eisener Stadt, or the, the city of metal, or the city of iron. Um, or Feropolis. For, the, the, yeah, Feropolis yeah. is, is this the city of iron. And I guess it's like uh, just... Uh, uh, it was probably a huge, uh, not, not a manufactory, but uh, a place where they harvested some kind of a metal. Yeah, I would say. And the, there's good words. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, a lot of heavy gear standing around here, which turned into like this um, uh, uh, perfect uh, rave background or perf perfect uh, rave. Uh, um, there's something uh, very special um, about industrial backgrounds yeah. for particularly techno parties. I, 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 I have the exact words for that. I, I had this uh, vision or, it. yeah, it's uh, man against the machine or the rave against the machine. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And last Second year- I made me say oof in two episodes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was here last year and I thought, what is this? These machines were all rusty, lit up by special effects and visuals. They look like, uh, it, it looked like a post-apocalyptic rave after the machines took over and we took over again, you know, like the post post apocalypse. I'm getting very Mad Max imagery, yes, which exactly, actually is exactly. like a lot of uh, a lot of the the outfits you see now. Yes, like uh, I I remember the friends who would um, make fun of when I first started wearing a harness. Yeah, uh, yeah. this. Uh, Mad Max 2 Thunderdome yeah. and his character with the harness but the, 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 the bucket on the head the exactly, whole time. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's me apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, I think we're all, uh, we were talking about Gen Z fashion and so on mm -hmm. and everybody is getting more and more post fashion, post techno, post pop and um, I think post means that something was already destroyed, the old, the old world is destroyed, the new world is coming but it still doesn't have all the resources so we can, we try to make what we can with those old elements and stick them like together. And uh, again, so the vision that I had here la last year is that uh, we have we have gathered here to to uh, celebrate like the 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 win or the 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 zig <laughs> uh, against the machine, and which is for me one of the basic principles of electronic music, uh, and this is why maybe AI could never win as a as a track producer because the whole the whole basis of of electronic music is. How can I make the machine dance? Uh, <laughs> how can I make the machine dance for me? We, sorry, we want some okay. comments. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to ask if we can get we have a notepad or something because um, same, same topic as before. Yeah, I've got yeah. lots to say on your comments. <laughs> do we have anything to write? No, probably not. Okay, maybe I can jot yeah. notes on my. Yeah, 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 do that, do Actually, that, do that. Yeah, yeah. So ba basically, what I'm saying is, for me, in a lot of senses, uh, electronic music is. Uh, the, the fight of the man against, or, or the human against the machine. Uh, we try to make the machine dance for us, so we can dance to that sound. We try to, to make the machine make some noises, which we usually would find in nature or in um, more old-fashioned musical instruments. So yeah, um, I think it's, uh, it's a whole matching vibe here in, in Feropolis, a good, a good atmosphere. like woodwind. <laughs> yeah, I, w I would say Clavier, violin, Clavier. but uh, woodwind will be also yeah. nice. Yeah, flute. Uh, Geiger, Geiger, uh, Geiger, 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 Geiger. Geiger is a yeah, yeah. <laughs> Geiger is a yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Geiger what, is something else. This one. Yeah, this is a cello or a contrabass. 
Contra. Contra, Contra Bass is like uh, like the big one. We play cellos differently, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has his own cello fingers. True, true, technique. true. Or, or hers, or hers. Or hers, yeah. You need to get your, your uh, gender naming a bit, a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm working on it. No, no it's interesting because actually like when translated into English, like I have... Um, so uh, my Arabic friends, the, the, the yeah. natural go-to is he when referring to an object or, or, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, interesting. Relatable. Um, so just to go back to the first point, like yes, I love your poetic view of festivals, and I think that may be because you haven't been to so many, especially with industrial uh, uh, backgrounds. Or you, yeah. or you mean now the, the just festivals in, in general? Um, less. Let's okay. Well, let, let, let's take industrial backgrounds um, yeah. as one. Um, yeah. I think this is why it's always, it always feels authentic when actually, machines are actually, in the background. I think I have to say festivals in general because I yeah. haven't been to enough with an industrial background. Yeah, I think I've been to clubs with industrial backgrounds. Yes. I mean, I know, like for example, there's um, Stone Festival yeah. um, at um, Zolverein in Essen, yeah, yeah, which yeah. as a venue looks fucking spectacular. Yeah, and actually, I was meant to go there the, the first weekend of lockdown in 2020 for Hector Oaks and Chairman stuff. Yeah. Um, and they have a, a festival there this summer. And this is definitely, I would say, on a kind of like melt level of commercial, but it's just techno. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oster Comuni have, a, have a, a stage there, though. So it, it is nice. this kind of vibe. Um, then it's for real. I think. <laughs> and they got a stamp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Isa, by the way. And, <laughs> and, and Dan also. Yeah. See, see you next weekend for Drift in Amsterdam. Yeah. You all Very have exciting. fun and Radiant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, so. I think I think with like um, what you described, you know, um, this is kind of what I experience at smaller festivals that are well selected. I'll give you an example. It doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, JP and I, it was our first festival together, went to Herdamit, which was in Friedenberg. Does that make sense? East of Berlin. Herdamit. Herdamit. Yeah. It's like a, sh a shortened version version of uh, Herdamit Off. Like Herdamit Off is stop, and Herdamit is probably don't stop. The sentence "heard damit off" okay, means okay. stop. Heard damit off. That, that sounds more yeah. more more uh, Eastern than, than 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 German, no? Yeah, it's, heard, it's German. Off. Yeah, heard damit off. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so so this was like. Um, and and heard damit is like here with us, like her with here heard with. Heard that sounds makes good. sense. That yeah. makes, I mean, that, that good for the context as well. Yeah, good so, branding. So, so heard damit. This was um, my first very small festival. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, maximum five thousand people, probably nearer two thousand. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even. Maybe even 1,000. I, I mean, it, it's hard to get say exactly. Um, and it was a, a disused uh, military military base, you know. Um, and uh, the lineup was pretty much um, like a, a good Bergheim. Um, except they had, the, they, well, not except, they, they also had two stages. One was more Bergheim, one was more Pano. It was this formula. And also with the kind of more, uh, the, the musical styles and the elevation of like the kind of, Bergheim ish stage, uh, main 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 uh, main stage being yeah. kind of you have to come down the hill onto this big. Where was concrete. it again? Where was it? Uh, it was an old military base um, in I th I want to say Friedenberg. Sounds classic. Uh, like not, I don't think it was Freiburg. It was Freiburg, Friedenberg, something. But it was it was about an hour outside of Berlin. Going, oh, okay, yeah, it's not Freiburg. Freiburg yeah, is like Fr Friedenberg, maybe or yeah. Friedelberg or something like this. Yeah, um, and this was a real sense of community mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Um, it was like an extended Klubnacht, uh, except in this uh, ex insane um, uh, setting. Yeah. Um, and also... also the all open air or also some closed all areas? All open air, all open air, mm. all open air. Nice. Um, we were blessed with the weather, weather as well. Yeah. Um, and the people that were there were... Um, I, don't, I can't say majority, but there was a lot of Bergheim crowd there. Yeah. And a lot of people who, let's say, would have been on a pilgrimage to Bergheim, but yeah. were at a pilgrimage to Herdamit, you know? So th th this was a good example of this. But this was a very off, like, under-the-radar festival. Mm. Um not invite only, but it was word of mouth, you know? Um, and this was such a small amount of people. And this also goes into like why I generally enjoy smaller parties now. The same reason I experienced this, this smaller festival vibe for the first time was like, yeah. oh, wow. Because my experience up until that point of festivals yeah. have been thousands and thousands of people, um, mainly in the UK, actually, um, a couple abroad. Um, majority also, dance music of some kind. As you know, I used to be very into drum and bass. Yeah. Um, I, the first festivals I really enjoyed were uh, Global Gathering, uh, which is um, in the West Midlands in the UK, uh, about 30,000 people. Um, drum pretty and big, bass, house, pretty big. 
Huh? Thirty thousand is pretty big. Massive. Yeah. It, I mean, not enormous. Yeah, it's like, not Tomorrowland, because but I it's also went big. to Glastonbury, which is yeah. three hundred thousand people. It's ten yeah. miles end to end. Yeah. And this was a spectacle like nothing I'd ever seen. Yeah. I probably wouldn't go there again because I feel like I've. I've taken what I want from that compared to how much I can take from a much smaller festival. Yeah. Um, and also it's better to go to a more, in my opinion, targeted to a specific genre yeah. you're following. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this, um, this backdrop here is amazing. Um, yeah. But uh, looking at the lineup for myself, there's not yeah. a lot of great interest. Yeah. Um, I mean, so today, Kelza opening looks amazing. And yeah. obviously, Freddie K and. Looking forward to Kelza and, uh, and uh, Freddie K, definitely. Well, Kelza starts in 15 minutes. so uh, In 15 minutes, so now we're going we're, 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 we're <laughs> to try and come to you. Either he waits for us or we are going to be yeah. late a little bit for uh, the set. Shout out to Leo also, by the way. I haven't mentioned you in the run up to this. Um, <laughs> ben wanted to book you for the party, but you've got exclusivity. So. <laughs> <laughs> giving tough love from the first minutes it, here. I love it. That's not tough. It's an acknowledgement because Ben is, yeah. ben is fr pretty meticulous with, with his decisions on booking. Yeah, we're very picky yeah. with, with our bookings. Doesn't and, believe uh, in mediocrity. So we don't believe in mediocrity at all, and we really think that uh, Leo uh, is uh, is a very talented artist. We really like uh, what he's doing, and we totally accept his exclusivity with uh, this club or another. We would have loved to have him at uh, at Pouvou, but uh, you know, maybe someday later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or maybe in a different city. Huh? Yeah, maybe uh. in a different city. You know the game. Uh, yeah, so super nice uh, uh, background story. I, this is exactly what I wanted to ask you because I uh, don't have a lot of festival um, experience uh, of because of my personal choice. As I said, I would like to go to a nice rave and come back, come back home, have a nice shower and uh, and meditate, and then continue with my life. But I think <laughs> I think uh, a festival is just a bigger commitment, and I'm also not the biggest camping fan. I'm sure that if I would find in the, in the near future a nice festival where they have like nice uh, compatible hotels and. Uh, Suites or whatever, I would I would definitely like to, to experience that. Last year we were camping. I had like a, a small tent with the, with the friends and everything. And I in general I like it, but for me it's just uh, too much commitment. But I do know that there's a huge crowd uh, that loves it. And uh, I also didn't didn't go to the scouts when I was younger. So <laughs> you know, I mean, you can glamp. You can glamp. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mama's a good boy, and I always need. Uh, I don't want to say too much, but I, I need my own toilet. I mean, you, there, there are often day festivals, you yeah. know, where it's 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 just a one day, or you can get a day ticket, you know, and, and yeah. much like we're just here for for the day today, yeah. So we can we can we can shower later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, we can shower later. Yeah, it, it, it's, so so it's like actually, um, you mentioned about wanting to meditate, for example. You know, yeah, like yeah. Cheap comment, but actually. Like Sometimes it, doing it in open air is even better than well, coming back so home. So last summer uh, we went with the extended drift entourage to yes. Basila in Portugal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also Freddie Gay closing, uh, yes. incidentally. Classic. Uh, but incredible lineup. Um, uh, more classic techno. Um, yes. So the people there were generally either locals um, from Porto or Braga, um, or people who were like really specific about, hey, that lineup is sick. Yeah. Maximum again, one thousand people. First edition, it was great. And actually, they were doing yoga during the day for the group. They were they were putting up um, big uh, canopies for people to sleep under because the tents were just too hot and people were mashing the night before and just like zombies, you know. Mm -hmm. So put out a big thing for a group nap, yoga, refreshments. Like so, this is kind of the like wellness vibe of okay, party and then rest, chill, community, meet people. So actually it does exist. Yeah. This doesn't exist at Melt. This yeah. doesn't exist at Splash. This doesn't exist at many uh, maybe an idea, an improvement uh, like uh, but, but wait, constructive it's subjective. criticism. It's, subjective also. it's, subjective. it's, it's not subjective. criticism. It's not criticism. Yeah, it's not because, for everybody. Because like like um ten years ago, yeah. this would have been top of my list. You exactly, I get, um, I get it. But I get now, it. what I want from a festival is yeah. very different. Yeah. So actually, it's not. It's You're not a veteran, so fair. We can talk about fair, that later. Comment, yeah, about being, comment, yeah. 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 Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, so you, you would say that y you are more of a of a festival person than, than I am. Definitely, you have been to way more festivals. You have more experience about that. I would, I would maybe ask for, for some more stories uh, shortly. Sure. Um, uh, maybe we can continue uh, our uh, storyline from from last time at the in the in the end of the last. But before we yeah. do that, I just yeah, have yeah. one more point yes, to please. come back yes, to. Yes, please. So, so you 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 made a made a comment about how why AI would not work for uh, music production. Yes. Um, for somebody who has an ear for good music, yes, true. Yeah. But but for a, a same for graphic design. Fair, fair. But yeah. say say you take a huge festival. Yeah. Um, where like. Okay, so let, let's say, and this is a controversial comment, but I will say Tomorrowland. 
Uh -huh, you, know? uh -huh. you, you could have an AI an AI. They producer. actually had. They actually had during Corona. They had, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tomorrowland not had, so controversial. All of a sudden, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tomorrowland had a, literally an AI festival where a DJ was just playing on a on a booth and again uh, not criticism, but not criticism not for us. by questioning the the value of. Uh, so the, the festival was. Um, unfortunately cancelled because of lockdown and so on and so on so they created a virtual festival and they were like, it's like a hologram of Tupac kind of vibe no uh, yeah <laughs> i think the hologram of Tupac was even better because you had a real audience this was the opposite here you had like uh, david getter i would say david getter i don't know if it was david getter but i would he is ai no <laughs> he is he's not real david getter is not real hasn't, I mean, no, he's, hasn't he, been. he's just a he's just a <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> David Getter's not watching this, and if he is, if he is, uh, greets to David. If he I is, mean, don't, he don't follow my account, please. <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> Whatever you say about David Getter, David Getter is David Getter. You know, he did his uh, his work. Um, before we get uh, uh, thrilled by uh, by giving tough love, um, there was this uh, Tomorrowland, like I think three years ago or two years ago, where they literally just uh, gave a, a DJ a booth and and created the whole crowd, the whole festival. Uh, atm atmosphere or picture in in like 3D, um, not holograms, but like uh, uh, they just rendered the whole uh, festival, and it looked uh, it looked worse than than like the first uh, I don't the understand. first games I don't of understand. Sims. I don't understand. Uh, imagine like Nina Kravitz or somebody like that playing on a big stage. Why did you say Nina Kravitz? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Took, yeah. took that name Derek away. Call us over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's, yeah, a, it's a, <laughs> lesser okay. of two evils. Bank lock. Bank lock. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Imagine bank lock. I don't know if he was participating in in, in Tomorrowland. We we can say Salvatore Ganacci. This is like a a, a, per, a persona from uh, from the Tomorrowland uh, atmosphere that I pretty much like. What and persona? Salvatore Ganacci. I don't know. He's like a, he's like a, more of a meme, but he actually <laughs> he creates he produces actually really high quality uh, house music. But what he does while performing is only like uh, trolling. He's trolling. He's like uh, break dancing on the on the booth, uh, showing his criticism of, uh, of DJs that don't really do anything on stage, but actually produces good music. You know what I mean? He, he's like trolling all it's of like it. Patrick Mason. No, I I love Patrick, but I don't think Patrick is trolling anybody. I think Patrick is uh, serious about his art. Um, but I think Salvatore Ganacci is doing. Uh, he's creating a, a very nice uh, like joke. A parody, a parody. A parody, yeah. Mm. And Salvatore, like Salvatore Ganacci, is wearing um, sports uh, costumes, looking like a Balkan sports guy, uh, Gopnik, doing doing Gopnik doing vibe. yeah, Gopnik vibe, doing uh, breakdance waves on the DJ booth on Tomorrowland, like not going on stage, just letting the set play and so on. Um, so what, what I what I was saying is, imagine this this dude uh, playing. It was a streaming of Tomorrowland, and uh, the DJ is playing. The booth is real, but all the rest of it is just rendered. It's all three D uh, human beings dancing to it. And this was the live stream of Tomorrowland to create the vibe oh, that, or yeah, to create okay, the, okay. the the image in your head uh, uh, that there is a festival or how a festival could look like if it weren't if it wasn't cancelled uh, uh, due to the pandemic yeah it was awful and the, and the figures were all like very sims sims 1 sims 2 you know but that they might like, be that might be realistic for tomorrow land i wouldn't know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i mean just coming back to what you said or what i said and then you said ai is maybe capable of a lot and it will be probably more capable of 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 doing uh, a lot of stuff uh, very soon uh, maybe more than a lot of human beings, but it's very hard to to imitate um, art. It's very hard to imitate uh, human creation. It's very hard to imitate vibes, <laughs> you know. And that's why, uh, yeah, that's why probably it will take a long time before uh, the machine strikes back, especially in terms of uh, electronic music. Maybe maybe in in more. Uh, strict and industrial terms like uh, like uh, manufacturing and and producing machines can take over way sooner but in music and art i think it would take a little bit longer for ais to you know to I to mean, fight back maybe you can find an algorithm for creativity for some things but yeah um, yeah and, and, it, and it, it is where it comes to like this conversation about mediocrity because yeah. there, there is like the more <laughs> the more mediocre something is yeah the more uh, simple it is to create say a a cookie cutter formula yes to make a pop song for example yes. they all sound the same yes you know? when you find something that's more unique and really an expression of an artist's true yeah um 
sometimes discovery, even then, yeah. and then you can you can actually you can actually find a space where it cannot be replaced. And this yeah. is where you get it. But actually, uh, sometimes a human mistake is the 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 genius part yeah, or the sure, creational sure. part, or, or something that you did by accident. Oh, yeah, exactly. That sounds good, actually. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, so coming back to mediocrity and excellency, uh, what do you think? Uh, how would you describe the difference between festivals you have experienced before the pandemic and after the pandemic? Let's start with that. Just a, a couple I mean, of points. So, like disclaimer, like I'm not going to festivals like I was. I mean, from from like let's say 2010 to 2015, I was going to multiple every year, multiple, mm -hmm. multiple. Um, normally big, um, normally in the UK, um, and. Um, Actually, since since COVID, um, I've only been to a couple. Yeah, you know? yeah. And there have been these smaller, more remote ones. Mm -hmm. um, I Remind me to come back to smaller against uh, uh, or versus uh, bigger festivals. I had, I had something to ask you about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like I, I'm not the best person to ask for a comparison before and after. Yeah, you know, I, I, I haven't been to any large festivals really for a while after. until yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, yeah, what I wanted to ask is, you said you, you would prefer. Uh, you had a nice experience with uh, with smaller ones, and uh, I think many of uh, of the viewers or just people in general would interpret a saying like that. They would say, "Oh, it's very it's it's maybe it's a snobbish thing to say selected crowd and smaller festivals are better." I, I didn't but say actually, selected crowd with this. Though. I mean, festivals you buy tickets. You know, yeah, selection yeah. Thing. It's, it's There's different. not a lot of selection going on in they're festivals. They're, I mean, like. I don't know of any festival that rejects people once you turn yeah, up camping stuff. Pretty and, you much, know, yeah, like, pretty much. Um, may, maybe so why smaller uh, rather than bigger? What would be your your uh, main uh, criteria? Um, it's more personal. Um, yes. And uh, subjective. If, if if yeah, so so for example, like um, so Basila and her dummy, you know these yeah. two recent ones, well, relatively recent. Yeah. Um, you know they, they, they were they, they were not a lot of people compared to compared to you know <laughs> well over ten thousand others that I've been to, mm -hmm. and this this is making a huge difference because actually if it is a more under the radar festival and yeah. it's not flying all over social media with all these promos, the people that hear about it are the people that are maybe following the artists or the community around this festival. So yeah. they're, there for the, they're there for the right reasons. Yeah. I mean, there's no, like, the right yeah. reasons for that festival. Yeah. The right reasons for that festival. Yeah. Like, we have to correct that because people yeah, start, exactly, start discussing exactly, exactly. right and wrong so, reasons. So, so, we don't so, want to judge reasons yeah. for coming to a party. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, hey, so, so like, even if, even, like, if I wasn't... Um, as particular with needing a certain quality or sound of music to enjoy myself, I could very easily go to um, probably any of the festivals that are yeah. being held at Feropolis yeah. because it, like the, the, the spectacle of the outfits, the crowd, the energy, it's, 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 it's novel and it's enjoyable and it's beautiful. Yes. But if you've experienced that a few times and then you experience something where, oh, actually, if I'm going to something with a big group of people in a unique environment yeah. where also, I love the music, and also they do, yeah. and then it's it's a deeper level of enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, nice. I still think that, uh, to be honest, uh, Melt uh, or Feropolis, uh, uh, to be more precise, is a uh, not that of a like a huge uh, area. It's pretty big if you if you consider it like the the tent area and the stages and everything. But when you come here and you stand in uh, like in the middle of those uh, huge uh, metal machines. It still feels uh, like a, just an open air club, and that's why I think it's also a being very big one. A very, yeah, a very big, big one. one, like I would say, I don't know, four or five stages. But it's for me, it doesn't feel like that enormous, like probably uh, Tomorrowland would feel, or even like Lollapalooza in, in in Berlin. I've been there a couple of times. Like, totally how was that? How was that? Totally, totally mainstream, but uh, it felt bigger uh, for me in terms of like oh, I have to Ma go mainstream. Like what? Who was headlining? David Guetta. <laughs> 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 Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, not not only him, but many genres. Not only electronic music. Uh, um, Sam Smith, Sam Smith, okay, one of okay, the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah so no. very mainstream, very very poppy. Uh, but uh, in a lot of moments there, I felt like this point is not reachable, and this stage is too far. And here, I feel like at least the musical stages are more or less in eyesight, so you, it feels just like a huge club and uh, under open sky. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think uh, a lot of uh, movements now are, are um, renting it out or, or using that the space for their um, festivals like uh, Melt uh, and the other ones, I mean, Hole and so on and so on. Um, cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm still waiting to be uh, to be overwhelmed at a festival. I still want to have uh, I'm I'm 
I'm still expecting a, a wow experience now or in the near future. I would visit some festivals in the in the near future. Um, but as I said, I'm not the biggest uh, camping uh, guy, but I would like to see some special artists that maybe would not appear together on one lineup in Berlin or, you know, so, stuff like so that. Look, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, a friend of mine, a yeah. DJ, Crytek, uh, Berlin-based, um, yeah. putting on a festival, um, but it's, it's like unofficial, you know, yeah. um, at a uh, nuclear bunker an hour and a half out of Berlin on the second wow. weekend of July. Yeah. Now, the, the lineup is all underground Berlin DJs. Yeah. Most I don't know, a couple I know and a couple I like. Yeah. Um, and But I know a lot of people there and it's in a fucking nuclear bunker. Like yeah. with like- yeah, How it, warm is it or how cold is it? I don't know. Is I mean, it's summer, it's midsummer. Yeah. It's probably not climatized, right? What, uh, what do you mean? The bunker. It's uh, inside, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, like, it was, it was a spot for a lot of, a lot of illegal parties. Okay, before. okay, okay. Um, and this, this is a festival, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a festival you, you, you buy tickets for online, you know. Yeah. Um, and this, this is the kind of thing that th this is, this is an exciting concept to me. Yeah. Because uh, this is like the other end of the spectrum to fucking Sam Smith and David Guetta. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's still a festival. It's still coming under the yeah. same umbrella. Um, but um, th I this is a concept that would be more. Uh, yeah, some some would would consider uh, a festival a total gentrification or appropriation of cul of culture. On the other side, I think that a festival is exactly what uh, an open door means. This is the opportunity for a lot of uh, different crowds, a lot of uh, newcomers, a lot of uh, veterans to come together under one uh, rooftop. That's why, yeah, I in general, I think festivals are doing a very good uh, job in terms of. Uh, promoting the culture of electronic music and establishing it into the mainstream in a good way, establishing it into, into the norm, you know? If you would, uh, when Dr. Motte went in, in to, the, to the streets and uh, in, the, in, I don't know, it was 89 or something, somebody thought, who's that crazy dude with like 50 people behind him? Like a couple of years later, he had like one and a half million people uh, scrolling through Berlin uh, and it was called Love Parade. And then you have sp things like Tomorrowland where a million people in one festival listening to techno is just completely normal. You know, it used to be completely out of the norm. It used to be the 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 side society, like it was more considered to be the punk, the anti-social uh, society. And now it's the mainstream electronic music is what you hear on the radio. So mm -hmm. I think uh, festivals did a big job uh, uh, for, for electronic music uh, in that term. This, this, is, this is true, but then, you know, for, 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 for like for, my, for myself, I would never um, like one of these, one of these like festivals with, I mean, a million people, but like, like yeah. a, 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 any, 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 uh, anything in the like five figures. Yeah. Um, the <laughs> the uh, specificity of music in terms of niche that I enjoy gets broader and broader mm -hmm. to a point where it becomes less and less about the music yeah. and more just about the the charade. You know, the yeah. the the the. the uh, extravaganza, the, the, yeah. the, the, the hullabaloo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's 90% uh, phones, then you probably know that... Uh, uh, that's a harsh measure, but yes, yes. Yeah, yes, if it's 90% true. phones, even if the lineup is good and the sound system is good and the artwork is good, I see a lot of... You know, we can get into that subject. That's a hurtful uh, subject for me, a personal I mean, side thing. Trance, uh, side trance is not my genre, but the, the decor for their festivals is dope yeah. as fuck. Yeah, Because yeah. everyone's tripping on acid. So they yeah. want to... So, so they want Love side trance. Yeah, yeah they, I they grew up on that. Provide something cool to look at. Yeah, you know? yeah. Where I come from in Israel, side trance is uh, more mainstream than, than techno. And it was the, the sound <laughs> that we grew up on. And uh, yeah, I sometimes really like uh, seeing... Uh, different co uh, contents and, and videos from Psytrance uh, festivals. We also, I think last time we talked about Psytrance community uh, and their uh, unity more than other uh, communities. I think they, they have that feeling more than, than, than other niches. Um, yeah, so festivals establishing, uh, establishing uh, techno or electronic music into the mainstream, into, into the culture, reminds me actually of Woodstock. You know, that was probably one of the 
first or the first uh, massive uh, festival that had a huge uh, change in perception and change of mindset into in people's minds, right? Suddenly you had like a lot of hippies smoking weed, doing another, doing different stuff, uh, listening to alternative. Free love, free drugs, blah, blah. Free love, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was a cultural movement. It, it, yeah. it changed everything. Against the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? It really went As, against As uh, Timothy Leary said, tune out and tune in. <laughs> no, no, drop out and tune in. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm... Probably Woodstock is my uh, reference for this uh, ideal uh, trip that I maybe would like someday to 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 to, to have in a in a festival. Uh, but uh, last year at um, at Melt, I kind of yeah, I kind of enjoyed the, the music. I had we had a nice uh, we listened to a nice set by I think D Dan and uh, DJ Tool uh, towards the the sunrise. And uh, for that moment, sorry, I what festival was it? Here, here in Melt last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah, Tool. Oh, nice, yeah, nice. Tool and Didan were playing a B two B where Tool was like picking the vinyls and Didan was uh, was um, <laughs> switching them and uh, and mixing, and uh, it was uh, one of the smaller stages here, and it felt a little bit more intimate, and uh, the the moment was right and everything was good. I also find it good that if you have different stages with completely different genres you can have extremely different communities enjoying the same uh, infrastructure at the same time in the symbiosis it doesn't it doesn't uh, interfere and sometimes you have like people switching and trying something new and listening to something new and then you go to a different stage and somebody's singing there and yeah so i like that that um uh, symbi symbiotic trip here um cool Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's come back to our uh, tough uh, love uh, subjects. Let's forget for a second that we're sitting at a festival right now and come back into the studio maybe. And uh, again, come back to, to the topic of uh, mediocrity and, and excellency. I think uh, I would like to maybe even like finish this off or, <laughs> or get forward with that. <laughs> uh, we started talking last time about the fact that uh, Maybe some clubs don't improve their sound system. Maybe some clubs don't improve their light system. Then you said, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not that of a technical uh, guy. I would consider it to be more important to, 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 to take care of and improve the safe space or the safety of the space and to, to, to take care of the, of the um, uh, selection of the, of the crowd in the community. And um, I would like to ask you maybe the, this question. What would be for you a difference between a mediocre uh, selection uh, and a excellent selection uh, at a party does that mean that uh, some people don't belong inside you know like many people think that we are we're, we're yes. referring snobbish to our parties and we're saying it, it, some people don't deserve some people uh, are not there for the right hey, reasons hey, some people don't deserve some yeah. people can't handle some people can't handle can't that. handle yeah, and and nice uh, this is this is most people, if you look at the general the general public, mm -hmm. and in the scene uh, or, or, or in regular goers to electronic music parties, compared to an excellent selection for me personally, yeah, um, it's most. It is most people still actually. Yeah, um, an excellent selection still takes. When most I say of most, I'm not talking 95. I'm talking like 60 at this point. You know, from your experience, in it's 60 percent. Try to yeah, like yeah. So 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 for example, like um, uh, a, a mediocre selection. Yeah, is our the guests of the party physically safe that's mediocre if the answer is yes that's mediocre I'm that's like a first filter that, yeah exactly which is mediocre you yeah know? it's mediocre but because actually actually like some i think some mediocre selection is like the club saying to the selector uh let more people in we need more money we need more tickets i think that's mediocre or that's um, even like way, way same, worse. Same, yeah. same result here. Yeah, same result yeah, yeah, here. Because yeah. because uh, excellent selection. For, so so for, for example, like um, say um, uh, say say uh, uh, a, a, a one one man uh, one male approaches the door alone. Um, seems to be um, cis hetero on first appearance. Um, knows the party. Knows some of the artists playing. Um, probably would enjoy themselves. Um, but then it's like, okay, so that's, that's okay, yeah, looking good. First but then filter. it's like, okay, well, what party is this? Is this a queer party? Are there going to be topless women? Is this guy 
so straight and um, <laughs> moving towards toxic that even if he's not a sexual predator, even if he's not going to grope someone or put something in their drink... Very hard to acknowledge a sexual predator at first sight, right? It's, it's uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, a so, sociopath so, is very so, hard so, to... So, for example, like, you know, if, if one of my female friends um, doesn't feel comfortable... Uh, being topless because this guy standing there is staring, even yeah. if he's not touching, even if he's not approaching, but he's yeah. in the shadows and she can yeah. feel his glare. Yes. Then that's excellent selection to say no fuck off. How can you feel that at the door? We, we, would you have your friend topless standing next to you and yes. testing, <laughs> <laughs> testing his stare? Uh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, so so, and, and and this is why my 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 gift of of understanding people and bringing them into my space for a second, because okay, so so if this guy um, is someone who would be totally harmless, but then sees, sees tits and goes crazy, then this is some, a behavior that can be addressed. I can say, listen, like not actually saying these words, but bring them into, bring it, leveling with him kind of man to man, yeah. you know, like understanding, understanding who he is, yeah. uh, what does he want, what are his priorities, and also making him feel safe as well. Yes. Showing him that I'm not a threat, showing him that yes, like somehow I'm in power here because I'm choosing about his entrance. I'll give you an example. So friend of mine, won't name her, um, was uh, harassed, not physically, but was being um, uh, not left alone by a very persistent guy at a party I was at in January. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I told you about this. And um, I, won't, I won't go into the whole situation. It's, it, it's too long and not totally relevant yeah. to the story. But, yeah. um, but bottom line is, um, you know, like he, like, uh, he tried to come into a party I was selecting for mm. some weeks later. Okay, so you you already had some background so, yeah, information yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. him, and at first he wasn't he wasn't coming into the party. He was he was st st stood outside at the front you know, talking to some friends, and actually I saw him talking to a friend of mine who I do love and trust, and who is not a toxic guy. So I was just like, hmm, he's friends with him. Maybe maybe he's okay. If he tries to come in, I'm going to have a chat with him. Mm -hmm. You know, rather mm -hmm. than just saying I know what you're like, pal. You know, yeah. He tried to come in. I was just like, come over here. I was like, listen, um, I'm not confronting you, but I'm telling you, uh, you remember me, right? You know I was there. You know, you know I know what happened, I saw what happened, and that was my friend also. I know everything, yeah? I'm not saying you can't come in, I'm not attacking you, but you are not gonna come in until we talk. Okay. I was like, so, talk to me. What have you got to say? About the, yeah, the past, the previous situation. What have you got to say? <laughs> yeah? Throw the ball in his court. <laughs> and, um, Arabic guy. Okay. He says, I'm disgusted at myself. Oh. Now that, for an Arabic guy, I have many Arabic friends, this is a massive step. Step. Yes. So I'm like, okay, why? And he's just like, blah, blah, blah. And, and he gave a good account of himself. And he then, knew what you, were, what you were talking about without you referring to it specifically. Yeah. 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 Um, I was like, you remember the last time we saw each other, right? You know yeah, what? Yeah, okay, okay. And, and then, just to make sure... Um, I got very close to him and put my hand on his hip and said, how would you like it if I did it to you, bitch? <laughs> and nice he, and, and he, 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 he shivered oh. and he said, um, thank you. Thank you for making me feel it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I mean, so, so this is like me saying, hey, look, like this is the same. This is a... Completely. A, 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 Almost. A, 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 yeah. in, in terms of like um, physical threat in a sexual way, you know, mm -hmm. like if I wanted to, yeah. if I was a, uh, a toxic um, homosexual rapist, and yeah. I was just like, hey, I'm going to put you in your place now, <laughs> you know, graphic, graphic. Getting our heart into the role. I'm starting the, to. Uh, this, 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 this is the. Yeah. So, so and also this, this is like um, the, the, the language that some people only understand. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I, I was showing him, hey, look, maybe how you feel now being my bitch it's how you made her feel. A stranger yeah. you don't know. You don't know what impact you had on her. You don't know if she feels safe going to parties. You don't, you don't even know her name. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And you could, have, you could have messed her up. You could have messed her up. And what did you say? Um, he was crying. He cried. Crying? Wow. He, he, crying. Yeah. He, he, like, he was like, yeah. and, and another friend of mine, um, who I can name, Simo Habibi, yeah. love you. Um, I think I, I had a chat with Simo. Yeah, I, yeah. I Simo like, a couple uh, of days he, ago. He joined the conversation okay. as, as a, you know, let's say mediator re recovering from the uh, aggressive patriarchal upbringing of, 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 of Morocco, where he's from, Yes, you know, and, and, um, contributing to this, this wonderful conversation. And I saw this guy, um, being in the party after where we'd had a good time being fam over familiar with a girl, um, 
uh, a friend of mine, I asked afterwards, I was just like, oh, like, um, I saw you dancing with this guy. Like, did he treat you respectfully? Yeah, you know? and she said? And she's like, he was, he was, um, he was very forthcoming, but mm -hmm. when I said no, he, un he listened and he was respectful. So Lesson learned, maybe. This is, well, progress. Progress or perfection? And this is my point. Like, yes. th th this, this, is, this is excellent selection. Yes. Nice. This is, this is above so and beyond. So being super attentive and being, being aware, aware of the implications. And, uh, being, yeah, not only cautious, but really going into a conversation with the person. I think it's a genius approach because I see a lot of big parties, especially sex positive parties, that don't even select. They just want to see if you have the right outfit. This is like the worst uh, um, selection for me because I've seen on very popular, very big sex positive parties, only the filter of, of clothing. Like, if you wear a harness, you're in. Show me your harness. No, you're not naked enough. Show mm -hmm. me more. Show me more and then you go in. If you show me more, then you show me that you're ready to uh, uh, unleash the beast or, or uncover yourself and be open, then maybe you're open-minded enough to enter my party. But this is like, do you understand how disastrous this is? Because uh, they don't even care to well, then think. Then you get people going to see flesh. Exactly. You, even those, Maybe uh, non-predators that enter the party have the vibe that, oh, this is a party about getting naked. This is a, the, the vibe is about showing more flesh and looking for more flesh. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've seen it live how this uh, not only mediocre, but like disastrous uh, selection ends in disastrous situations, ends in like, uh, really unfiltered uh, mix of people uh, and, and, and like, uh, yeah, traumatizing results. So uh, thank you for uh, yeah, en enlightening us a little bit more about the uh, excellent. And, 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 and I think, and, it, and this is why like, um, I feel, I mean, duty is a strong word because mm. like, but, but, but uh, I, I care about it, you know, because yeah. actually like um, the conversation I had with this guy was not comfortable, you know, as you can imagine, for anyone. Yeah. I, I think I enjoyed it more than he did because I was actually finding a new way to communicate a difficult message to someone who really fucking needed to hear it. Mm -hmm. And he was very thankful as a result because he could feel that I was being open with him despite my position of power. Um, and not everyone has the emotional intelligence to do this, the desire to do this, or the position to do this. And I think you and I both know some selectors and security who are also part of the fucking problem actually in terms of creating a safe space because they don't make you feel safe coming in yeah you know yeah. And, and i think this is it like you know like it, it redefines what safety is which is also what we talked in, in the yeah. last podcast yeah. a bit um and um it like obviously after entering you know after this interaction you know he's 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 felt as vulnerable as you can in this situation yeah and come through feeling like a better person mm -hmm. you know nice nice Let's skip uh, to a different aspect of, of an event or a party, uh, which could be, um, mm -hmm, which b could be categorized uh, by being mediocre or excellent. I mean, uh, more simply put, how about a curation of a lineup from your perspective as a guest, not even as a community manager or, or an organizer, what would be a difference for you between a mediocre uh, curation of, of, a, of a lineup of artists and an excellent uh, thought through curation? I think there's top of my head two elements. Uh, one is about doing something which is not part of the formula. Um, I know that there's a lot of uh, lineups that are look pretty similar at the same uh, across multiple parties in Berlin because they're like, like Berlin is my reference point yeah uh, because the same there are certain DJs that uh, have a bit of hype around them are cool have a reputation for doing a certain thing at parties and then other parties that oh that party was good I'm gonna book that DJ you know mm -hmm. so so th this leads to a saturation and uh, dilution of what could have been excellent to start with yeah um, and I think I think the other point is um, not trying to uh, <laughs> and this is maybe controversial, um, depending on how it's interpreted, but not trying to adhere to a specific sound. Mm -hmm. um, many parties, maybe I can say most parties, at least that I'm aware of, um, are, have a 
uh, a specific sound. Um, and sometimes this is done really well. So for example, sixth, you know, like a very, a very, a very specific sound. You can hear it's a sixth party, um, but the artists are exploring, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like you can say, um, like, oh, do we name more? Name more uh, uh, Vox Nox. Vox Nox, okay. um, Vox Nox has a sound. Um, but uh, Vox Nox is... Maybe explain to some people more what does that mean the, when a party has a sound. So um, you can probably anticipate the speed of the music, mm -hmm. the, the timing of the drop, the, ty the type of um, dancing people are going to be doing, uh, the kind of environment as a result. So it's more uh, than sound, it's like almost a genre. It? It's, it's, it's a formula. Unfortunately, yeah. It's a formula. A formula. It's a formula. formula yeah. um, and um, I think an excellent lineup an excellent lineup is one where you look at it, you go, oh, I haven't seen that before. And that's pretty cool. So was the surprise effect, some, some uh, mixes in, in, in uh, maybe B2Bs or just uh, could be, mixes could of be two B2Bs. floors that are contrasty or, or, or Both artists good ideas. that normally Both would... Both good ideas. Would, Both good ideas. Yeah. But putting a B2B together that people didn't think... I mean, so um, um, Drift last October, we did a matriarch back-to-back Ebon. Yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. Both great artists in their own right. Both to play Berg uh, Berlin, yeah. uh, Berlin quite a bit, yeah. and then put them together for B two B, which was legendary. You know? Nice. Yeah. And, and, and this, 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 this is an example, or, or just um, booking someone from like uh, um, a, 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 a perhaps uh, who's known more for a certain subgenre, um, and putting them in a situation where they're playing to a different crowd. You yeah. Know? I mean, I mean. So, for example, a, 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 a more crude but maybe good example, um, putting someone like. Uh, Francois X in Panorama Bar, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, nice one. I mean, fuck yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. like Ben Clock did a couple of sets in Panorama I'm, Bar. I'm over Francois X and Ben Clock, but, but yeah, yeah I, I, <laughs> I wasn't. I am a Ben Clock fan, but I wasn't a fan of his Panorama Bar sets. But I think Francois would have uh, rocked yeah. it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so, so th th this kind of thing, and, and cool. um, nice. I, I think th nice th 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 this is a more a more serious example than Gabba in Pano. <laughs> 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 from the from uh, from the last episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one was like yeah, Gaba in uh, in Globus, uh, which was like uh, which is the the Trezor version of Panorama. Bar, like but a yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was. I was I was traumatized by those sets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not because of Gaba, I must say, but just because of the mediocre curation at the end. You That's know? like your biggest trigger now, medi mediocrity. Yeah, I'm like, why aren't you just trying harder? Try harder. But some no. people, it's like, 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 so, so, um, as I said, I'm not, I'm not a technical guy. I can hear if someone is a bad DJ. Mm. I can't hear if someone is a mediocre DJ. I, mm. ju I just hear if they're doing a good track, track list. Yeah. Or, or I, hear, I hear if someone is really bad or really excellent. Yeah. I don't hear this, this kind of this middle. between six and seven, you know? When, um, when I, when I'm, when I'm referring to mediocre curation, I mean that um, they probably sit together, look at some big names, some underground names, mix them together, but they don't really know if this uh, uh, symbiosis or this. Uh, storyline would work also you can never know ahead uh, what the uh, artists what the DJs are going to play but you do give your best in kind of imagining the uh, the that you the, do uh, yeah you do not all bookers do yeah i mean i mean us i mean uh, shout out to amit our uh, booker and uh, producer uh, we really give ourselves a lot of time and thinking uh, we really invest in a, a lot of resources into just first of all researching uh, listening, giving the artists... Researching new artists. Uh, yeah, we're researching the artists, we're listening to their music, we're, we're brainstorming about who they could fit to without only staying in the genre. You know, so we're not thinking, oh, he's like groovy techno, let's put another groovy techno on that, uh, DJ on that floor. We're thinking, hey, maybe how can we control the trip? How can we give the people the, the, the most amazing, surprising or just... Uh, uh, unexpected uh, change of frequency and still keep them going, not to kill the vibe, not to um, not to give them a too hard transition or uh, up or down. Um, that's why we also o o always do two floors. We always try to to give people the choice between we call we call that but between heaven and hell or have a heaven and earth. I would say. And hearth is uh, awful enough. We don't need what help. What about purgatory? Don't you have room three? <laughs> <laughs> we'll think that, about that, that, that's, that's a chill area. Yeah, that's a chill area. Yeah, purgatory is good. Do I go upstairs or downstairs? Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's the, something between a, a dark room and a and a uh, chill area. Yeah. 
That sounds That's like my, my, my uh, flat, no? my, my apartment. Somewhere between the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So w basically what I'm saying is I feel that uh, a lot of uh, events and uh, groups that went really successful and really make, m to my assumption, okay, I'm not saying anything concrete, but they probably make money with the, their, the work they're doing or at least they cover the costs. Sorry, you're talking about parties... Talk about parties, talk about big guys. events, big uh, big uh, communities. I think they cover the costs. If they have events like uh, going on for like five, six years, they probably don't lose. And if you're not losing, then you're pro then you're more or less doing a business. And it's not bad to call yourself uh, a commercial organization if it's uh, if that's what you want it to be. Uh, if you don't lose, if you're losing, it's a it's a charity. But you know? I mean, by definition, commercial is like. This makes sense Being financially, profit. you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, drift isn't commercial. Yeah. Drift isn't commercial. It's not like, like, Unfortunately, like, Peruvo also now. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but they're excellent. They're excellent. Yeah. And, and it's just like, like, so, so to me, the word commercial itself has negative connotations. Yeah. If you talk about an artist going commercial, it means they're shit for money. Yeah, you know? exactly. Same I think it, it, uh, I think calling a party commercial means uh, the, the motives behind so if you enter the business for money, if you enter the scene for money, yeah, you're probably, you're probably um, in for the wrong reasons or you're in for the right reason for your uh, pocket. I, I mean, but, but, but then again, that is, that is subjective too, you know? Because exactly. Like, I, I, but you're going to exit the scene at the end. If, you're, if you enter the scene for money, the scene is underground. The scene does not exist or the underground does not exist for uh, money or for profit. So sooner or later, you're going to go out. But I mean, what what <laughs> what about like uh, if if uh, um, you have a either you grow out or you're being kicked out. But I mean, you, you could have a, a like a successful party yeah. commercially that gets gradually worse and worse as it gets more and more financially successful. Worse, uh -huh. like in terms of quality of to realness, but yeah. better in terms but, of but tickets. So 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 look at. Uh, uh, look, look at Heronswana, for example, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good example because we're yeah. talking about Heronswana was extremely underground. For a lot of people extremely in the world, they don't even know that word. So I still, yeah, so it, I, it, it, they okay. still move in the underground. You know what I mean? The, but, this, this brand is still moving in the underground. To an extent. To an extent. To an extent. But, but, but I mean, the underground has, has, has evolved yeah. um, as the party has out of it. Yeah. Um, and that, like, like it's a commercial party. It's mm. very financially successful. It's, it's all over the world. Mm. Um, it's lining a lot of pockets. Yeah. Um, is it is it is it a good party for me? No, no, not so at all. So why staying mediocre? Why not investing? I mean, a profitable commercial product could still be a good product. I mean, I love my iPhone, and they have the probably the most uh, the biggest amount of money but, in the but world. Hang on. I mean, so so by definition, the higher the caliber of the, or the higher the quality of something, the more fine tuned the user has to be to appreciate it. Yeah. And the better the party, the less people are that will actually really mm. appreciate it for the same things you're appreciating for, yeah. for the same reasons you're, you're putting it on for. Yeah. And I think it, there, there comes a point where it's like, uh, another, another good example, like, so, and this is one that's kind of straddling, you look at, look at Veselka, you yeah. know, with, with, with Tweeman, who I adore, you know, like Veselka now is not the underground party it was when it was in Kiev. It's international. It's all over the place. Um, it, it's a traveling showcase. It's a traveling showcase. It's yeah. a, and it's a commercially successful one. Um, does it have the same community? Um, I mean, I would say the last um, real Ukraine underground feeling Veselka I went to was with you, with you, Eleanor, um, at, uh, at Eden last July. That, that, that was the last time I felt the Veselka energy. That is very harsh. That is very harsh because we organized another Veselka afterwards, but I exactly know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Well, is it, is exactly it harsh or is it tough love? It's tough love. Yeah. It's tough love. It was a, it was a, a approval presents and it was a mix of a lot of stuff, but it probably wasn't Veselka's community. And I, I, I totally mean, agree. I mean, I mean, it, 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 did, it didn't, it didn't feel like, like Veselka, um, yeah. but, it, but it was, it was a success. You know, if exactly. you look at it, uh, okay, yeah. it was busy, there were lots of people. Yeah, D but still not a financial success, I must say. Without many people? Without many people. Yeah. <sighs> Good thing we're not in it we for lost, the money, bro. We lost, <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a it financial was su it was success packed. and we, it was packed and we also donated, but it wasn't a financial success, unfortunately. Mm. But, mm. uh you know, uh, we're learning and, uh, and we had uh, some very good memories from, from there. I, I exactly know what you mean if you compare, uh, compare this Veselka to, uh, to... Easter, which was... 
Yeah, like mm-hmm. divine species is something else. Yeah, we can talk about that, that one uh, later. But uh, this one, uh, divine species, was 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 a super super uh, small, uh, almost boutique event. I would call boutique. it boutique. Now yeah. this I like. This I like because boutique is like niche. It's 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 unique. It's yeah. maybe one off. You know. But a lot of people would interpret that as a snobbish approach. You know, because a, 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 a hotel. A boutique hotel is not for everybody, you know. It's yeah, not but for ni- everybody neither, to visit. Neither, neither, okay, so so so, and this is the thing. I was about to say neither is drift, and that's not true because. <laughs> <laughs> so so, uh, and and this is what comes down to excellent selection again. Yeah. So excellent selection. I I I I have I have friends who um, I used to party with a lot who now um, what they need to enjoy a party for them is a safe space with medium or better techno music with say 145 bpm or higher and somewhere they can take take their drugs Mm -hmm. and this is sufficient for them to have a good party and what we are talking about in terms of the quality is a quality that they're not looking for because they don't need they're not yearning for this experience so this experience of safe space with excellent selection of incredible music of surprising lineups of incredible people of community um this is something that doesn't benefit from having those guests who could easily be at <laughs> maybe, maybe heron swan or not even but 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 they could easily be at uh, bcco mm-hmm. yeah. yeah bcco yeah. bco perfect example they, they could be there and and have and have a good time oh not not to say that bcco music is is average i think it's better than this i have some very good friends it's not average are. but you can also consider it very specific i would say we were talking true, about a sound true, of a party true. i think BCCO they have has their a sound. Own sound. Yeah. sound some people are better within others i mean like like yeah. uh, you know og trues is 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 super dope you know yeah. um uh, but also he would play at sixth. There are many BCO, BCO artists that would not, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 um, so so th- 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 this, this is this is kind of my example. Like actually, um, this is not about this is not about um, excluding people who uh, don't deserve it. It's not about deserving it. It's mm-hmm. about welcoming people who appreciate it for what it is, because then they can have yeah. a stronger community around it. Exactly. Uh, I think the, really the selection at very good uh, qualitative uh, parties or events is about. Would you be ab- available? No, available. Would you be able to appreciate the art? Would you be a- able to appreciate the energy and the resources that would that were invested in that? And uh, it basically means to me that there is no profile for the perfect guest. There, there is no, as I said, there is no outfit for Berka, and there is no perfect outfit for a party like that. There is no right or wrong approach, but. Uh, there is probably a very strong filter of would you appreciate what is happening on the inside? Let me give an example. So, um, two parties, uh, Vaselka X Pruvu and Pruvu at Easter with Divine, Divine Species, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Divine Species, maybe half or a third of the volume of people, you know? Uh, yeah, in comparison to Vaselka. Something, something yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, something yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the crowd was immaculate. Yeah. Um, 95% immaculate. Um, the, the, the music was incredible. Uh, there were not a lot of dancers compared to uh, Vaselka at the closing. Yeah. Um, but they were there for the right reasons. Yeah. The right that's reason. why they the energy it. holding them was stronger. And, and, yeah. and, and like the people who would have been there in this analogy for the wrong reasons are the people that would have had just as good a time at Vaselka. Because they can go to any. They can go to any. They're more universal ravers. Universal, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see, it's not negative. You're universal it's not negative. In your niche. It's good yeah, for you. yeah. A lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of festival goers and a lot of party goers are just very universal. I hear from a lot of uh, uh, friends of my common friends of ours that this party and this party and this party are all good. They all appreciate them. It's it's more. <laughs> we are. We have to admit it. Um, we we don't want to be the snobs, but sometimes we come through as the snobs just because we have a very selective taste, and it's connoisseurs, okay. connoisseurs, 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 not snobs, you know, connoisseurs. Which is a snobby thing to say. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> connoisseurs. <laughs> Connoisseurs of techno and dropper, you know. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> connoisseurs of techno and dropper is good. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I, f- I feel the same. After a couple of years of, uh, of hard raving, I, uh, I I've I've really started to appreciate special events, special moments, and I started to think that if I already invest those resources, if I already give uh, myself away, then for that special uh, occasion, for that special moment, it's. 
It's actually exactly like drinking wine because I think wine connoisseurs are just you know like people that treat uh, alcohol as a as a uh, um, as boutique hedonism. They know that is that it's harmful for their health. Good wine is wasted on me. I yeah. I am I'm a universal drinker. Exactly. Yeah. I I, I wouldn't. I'll uh, have a vodka mata. <laughs> <laughs> I could appreciate a good wine, but I have no idea how to. You know, get to the to the uh, real uh, taste of any every element in it. So it's the same for us, I think. In uh, what is happening there in the back? There? I yeah, I think le- next time we will have a 360 camera going on here, so the people uh, so the people at home can uh, can have a glimpse of uh, what is happening. <laughs> Uh, I wish. I mean, I wish you could see what we see on camera right now, but it's a beautiful picture. Not for everyone. It's only. It's a picture for connoisseurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, we're. Uh, uh, yeah, you think? Yeah. Are well, we going to be disciplined like Marky wanted wanted us to be? Are we going to um, be like? Um, Caro, do we have a limit on the battery life for the camera? Yeah. What's let our, us know. Let us know how much. Uh, because Marky said before. I mean, we, we look like we sit in front of a huge battery, but we're still limited to. Yeah. Okay, cool. so so we have, we have we have we have more time. We have more time. Ah, two percent. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So actually, <laughs> one hour was. No, not the, the, even. Not even. Yeah, yeah two, exactly. We have, we, have, we have two hours. Or we have twenty minutes. Or 2%. I think. I think we're. Mi- Let's tease okay. a little well, bit or we're, brainstorm we're, we're, a little yeah, bit what up. would be a nice idea to talk about in the next one. <clears throat> so, because uh, uh, either way, we want to get to the two to uh, Quelsas, uh, Kelsas, uh, I mean, uh, set I mean, in a I bit. I mean, if he's playing one hour, we're gonna miss it. No, he's not playing one hour. I thought it was two. I have, it's, I have, I have, I have the official mail app actually. I think the I, only occasion <laughs> where one hour was okay was Love Parade, or I mean, or Rave the Planet uh, last year. Uh, we really tried to press everybody in. Two hours. And, uh, yeah, two hours, two hours, hours is okay. Yeah. Two hours is okay. <laughs> what would be your your uh, perfect uh, set length uh, in a in a party? Like if you have an artist, of course, if it's a closing of Freddie K, it could go for twelve hours. But like uh, an average uh, an average ideal time for you to, as a dancer to listen to, because you go back, you go for a fourth. Is three hours too much for you to listen to? Is uh, for one artist? Or Depends on the caliber of the artist. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean like. We're talking about only good calibers, heavy calibers. Then, 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 for me, it's more down to the artist because, yeah. like, uh, social Vlad, like, um, he, like, I don't think he's played uh, a six-plus-hour set, for example. You yeah, know? I'd love to hear what it what it, what it would sound like. Yeah, um, like uh, I, I, I've only heard Vlad play two two-hour sets, I think. Yeah, um, and Vlad I'd is lo- a ninja. He comes, yeah, I, he shoots, I, I, and I'd, he... I'd love to, I'd love to hear more. You know, but 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 also I, I think I think it's very down to very much down to the artist because I think I think particularly with festivals, um, particularly with electronic music festivals, if there's multiple stages, uh, with people walking past, um, the artists are not trying to tell you a story. They're trying to get you to come to their, their to listen to them. Yes. So it's like banger, 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 uh-huh. and you you might hear like a you know a, say a, say I don't know a Ben Clock set at a festival for two hours. Yeah. It's going to be very different to a Ben Clock set at Bergheim for five. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. So, 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 like for me, the longer the better. Yeah. Um, but the, and this is why I like the small festival because, hey, yeah. guess what? If you're coming for the music and there's like two stages, yeah. then the artists are given a long, longer time because yeah. people are there for the. The, the more intimate it's getting, the more story t- storytelling you're getting. Probably the more uh, probably communication there is between the artists and uh, the dancing bodies. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is something that I actually we talk about it very often also with uh, with my brother, which is also like um, playing sometimes having his uh, own events. And he says very often about good DJs or good artists that they can really read the crowd. And uh, very often, I haven't, coming back to mediocrity uh, versus excellency, very often in Berlin especially, I haven't seen any communication between the artists and the crowd. I have seen so many DJs that are uh, probably technically well-skilled, but not even looking at the crowd and definitely not changing their work plan towards the crowd or because of the crowd. So... Crowd reading or floor reading is uh, one of probably the the higher skills there are uh, for uh, for an artist for a DJ. Also, shout out to Ruslan by the way to Mace. He told me at the, one of the first sessions oh, we had, <laughs> one of the first sessions we had uh, with Ruslan, uh, with Ruslan, he said uh, a good artist always plays with the walls. It's not about playing the same set in like five six different clubs. You come to a new club. 
you come to a new square of cement, of metal, or whatever, and you match yourself to that room. And it also means the crowd. The crowd is uh, probably the most, the most important, massive part of the room. You try to uh, manipulate in a good way the bodies. You try to read what they want. You try to give them something they haven't heard. You try to give them something you want. And this is about this communication. And this I see, unfortunately, very seldomly especially in Berlin parties and clubs. In festivals, it's very hard. In, in festivals, it's very hard to read the crowd because the mass that you see... Well, and, and the, crowd, the crowd is is changing non-stop. Yes. So yes. It, it's not possible. Yeah, it's, uh, hard, it's hard to get them unless, in focus. Unless, unless, again, smaller festival. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I hope uh, we're going to have some good time tonight. Uh, mm. Should we talk about this off camera? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think that's undoubtable. Un, 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 uh, undoubtable? Und yeah, undoubtable. Un, undoubtable. Yeah, undoubtable. Yeah. Um, very sure. nice opening for, sure. for that weekend. We have a very special weekend coming, right? Yes, yes. I mean, this is going to be retrospectively by the time this comes out. But uh, yes. yeah, Aleto, a Drift Associated artist, uh, playing for uh, yeah. Noah Kvetch Noah, tomorrow. Kvetch, yeah. Eve. Vlad and Wolflower at Anima. Vlad and Wolflower. A lot of shout outs here. Back to back at Anima. Nice, uh, nice, nice. At Elsa, yeah. A very nice summer weekend. I mean, nice, nice. Yeah, we can't, couldn't be, couldn't be, couldn't be more grateful. Cool, Let's almost spontaneous, almost. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, like we knew it like a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's uh, spawn plan, spawn <laughs> plan. <laughs> cool, Robbie. Thank you so much for hey, that. Hey, Brett. <laughs> much love. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, oh, and then uh, show, show, show your shirt. The back yeah. of the shirt. So, yeah. Uh, then we have to do a small shout out. Thank you, uh, Verter, for creating this uh, small collaboration with the uh, Techno team. Uh, hopefully, uh, soon. Small collaboration at your for big people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe soon at your available stores. <laughs> you know, like, um, what, what would be your, your go to for to buy t shirts in, in, in Berlin? I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, actually, like, 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 like I. I, f I find it uh, unusual to find uh, t-shirts that fit me well and that I, and that I same, like the same, design same. other than kind of plain stuff. Yeah. Actually, Verterra, I do really like a lot of the shirts uh, which, yeah. which they were giving me. Like they fit me well, good yeah. quality. To be honest, uh, yeah, I, still, I have like probably like six, six, seven, eight items in my in my, in yeah. my closet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and like, yeah, like the, the amount of um, offers I get for like paid partnerships with, with, with like brands I would never actually wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually when Verterra were like, do you want to, do you want to do this? I was like, yeah. actually, yes, cool. Yeah. Yes, please. Nice shout out, Jonas yeah. and uh, Uli. <laughs> cool. Uh, and Tessa, my former... Uh, and Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> my, my former contact. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, let's go Let's go uh, for Quaza's uh, set. I want to hear some um, nice music. And, yeah, we, we took your feedback. We're, we're uh, considering some guests for future... future yes, um, we're already talking about uh, future guests. We would like to hear your feedback, your suggestions, your ideas. Uh, we have our own uh, perceptions and, and, and concepts. We're definitely already brainstorming about that. And I think the next episode is going to be, again, in a new space that we haven't uh, where we haven't been uh, before so if you've got any cool uh, old uh, old buildings like <laughs> <this>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> let we're, us know yeah we're always open for something uh, um, uh, brutalistic uh, old fashioned we've got uh, some button, techno -ish, buttons ish yeah. <laughs> yeah against the machine uh, yeah so see you very very soon y'all cool <laughs> ciao ciao